Hi there! <laughs> My name is Laura Rafferty, and I'm an illustrator who loves to paint. Here's a tutorial on how to paint a watercolor background. The finished product from this tutorial will look like this. The first thing we're going to do is prepare. So we're going to wet our watercolors, and I've also printed out the coloring page on 90 pound watercolor paper. So the first step is to wet the paper. The key here is wherever you put the water, that's where the color will end up going. So I'm avoiding the foreground. Step three is to drop in the color. So this is the fun part here. Once you've wet the paper where you want the color to go, you can just drop in whatever colors you like. Step four is just to continue on, rinse and repeat. So what we're going to do is fill the entire background with these greens and bluey greens. I'm trying to make this page feel like she is in a natural sort of foresty springtime setting. And so you can see here, once you drop the color onto the paper, the color tends to spread and move around and do all kinds of fun things. Since I'm using 90 pound watercolor paper, that's the thickest paper that would fit through my printer, you will see that the paper is buckling. That's totally okay, I can flatten it later. But what's great about this watercolor paper is it is a 90 pound paper that takes watercolor beautifully. And the reason why is it has a nice amount of cotton in the fibers. So you can just see I am adding a lot of greens and blues and um, just sort of splotching it anywhere where I feel like. Uh, there's no right or wrong here. You can do it however you like. You can use whatever colors you prefer. I'm just showing you real time my method. This video is edited, but it's not sped up at all, so you can really see exactly how long things take me to do. I've just edited out some of the, the dead space where I'm paletting up and, and grabbing colors. Yeah, just take your time and enjoy the process. When you drop in the colors, don't be surprised that they move and soften as you go. This is called a wet and wet watercolor technique and it is so much fun for doing backgrounds because it really is um, very uh, flowing and it's just I just think it works awesome for, for backgrounds. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can see uh, here we're going to start adding detail. This is step five. At, at any point, you can um, follow along with the techniques I'm showing you here, or feel free to branch out on your own and do your own thing. Um, a lot of the details that I'm adding are dots and lines and swirls. Nothing really super complicated, because I really want the focus of this coloring page to be the figure, the main figure, in the center of the composition. But... I think adding a little bit of detail here and there really does add some interest to the background and takes it up another level. So you see I'm just uh, randomly, wherever my brush takes me, I'm just putting dots for the most part. And I'm still working in that wet um, background, so it's still spreading out and creating a really soft effect. As the paper dries, the softness of that um, watercolor will stop spreading as much. So if you want it to spread, use lots of water. And if you don't want it to spread, then use less water or wait for it to dry. Um, yeah, so the rest of this tutorial is mostly just actually a demonstration of sort of different watercolor techniques and different ways that you can approach doing a background just like this. Um, so you can see I am um, now using some lines to denote maybe some like spider plant type plants or something like that. But really there's no right or wrong way to do this and I encourage you to just sort of experiment and try new things and see what you really love, love um, the effect of. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> 
you can see I take my time when I'm watercoloring. It's a very meditative process for me and not something that I rush through. Um, the watercolor, uh, once you put down the water, takes about a half an hour to dry depending on how much water you put on the paper. And you can see that it's starting to puddle and pool in the buckles, but I'm going to show you later on how to, to fix that. But um, yeah, for right now, uh, I'm just adding some really dark color below the, um, like in the bottom half of this uh, composition. And the reason why I'm using dark colors on the bottom is because this is a page that um, I drew and she, her, she's supposed to be Persephone. So if you know the story, you know that she is a queen of the underworld. And so I wanted the, the top portion of the page to be light and bright and airy and springy and the bottom of the page to be kind of dark. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how I do a controlled drip effect. You've seen this before in my other artwork where I do drips and, and stuff, but I've found that over time if you do uncontrolled drips, you kind of get it going wherever. It's kind of harder to, to, um, to control. But um, I found that if you just paint a line down the, the page where you want a drip look to be, just make sure to load the ends of that drip with more color and it will look very authentic. Uh, so this is a way to fake dripping if you want to put drips in a specific location and you don't, um, you don't want it to be sort of all over the place. So you can see I'm also drawing my drips from the big puddly areas. This also makes it look more convincing. Yeah. And uh, adding contrast is really great for drawing eye, the eye to specific areas. So in the spots where I'm really liking the way things look, I'm adding darker color. And this, again, just sort of um, directs the eye in exactly the places where we want it to go. I'm adding more drips to everything. It's so much fun to sort of just play around with the colors and see what happens on the page. <laughs> so now I've swapped up to the top portion because the bottom part of the composition is really, really wet. And I feel like if I work too much on it, then it will um, start to get a big puddle of mush. So I'm, I'm moving along to a different spot. And this is another great way to work with watercolor is while one place is drying, you can move around and um, do other parts of the page. So I'm just dropping in more color. Now this watercolor wash at the top of the page is starting to dry, so it's less spreading. This is the point at which I love to add spatter effects. So there's two ways that you can spatter. You can actually just drop it by tapping the brush that's loaded with lots of water and pigment, or you can manually dot where you want the, uh, the spatter look to go. So I like to do both things. I tend to prefer to put dots individually myself, just because um, it really does uh, allow more control and also, um, you know, it just, it's fun. <laughs> All right, so here's the puddles I'm talking about. If there is a puddle on your page, you can lift that pigment and move it around. And what I do is I take a brush that's damp but not completely dry, um, and I squeeze out all the excess water, and then I pick up the puddle with my thirsty brush, and um, I can move that pigment around. I can um, remove it from the big puddle, and it's just a nice way, you know, before that puddle dries, to kind of um, take that uh, that big mushy area out of the <laughs> out of the composition. And now that I've done that, and the page is drying slowly, I'm just adding more and more details. Um, the bottom of the page has started to dry, and it's not as mushy. It's still a little damp, but it is definitely not spreading around like it was before. So this is all about water control, and really, you know, the best way to learn is by doing it. So don't be afraid of trying new things. I always say with watercolor, you really have to go with the flow. Um, watercolor is something that, while I do show you techniques on how to control certain things, like drips and spatter, 
Um, you really have to let the paint do what it will. What it will. Um, a lot of the time watercolor has a mind of its own and instead of fighting that or trying to um, force it, just by letting go and enjoying how the paint flows and works, um, you can really, really start to get an appreciation for how organic and beautiful it is. Over here, it kind of reminds me of a tree. So I'm turning that drip effect that I was going to do into a little tree. <laughs> and since Persephone is very, very highly associated with um, growing and plants and the organic, um, like, organic forms, um, I thought this was really appropriate. I'm adding a lot more darks down at the bottom. I want that dark that that bottom part of the paper to feel really dark and heavy because um, of the dichotomy of her being um, above ground half of the year and below ground half of the year and sort of how um, she has like this dual role in the Greek myths. So um, the bottom half of the page is going to be really dark and sort of almost sad and then the top I'm trying to give more of an impression of happiness and springtime. Another great trick is to tilt the paper. Um, say the, the puddles are going in places you're not really happy with or there's just uh, too much going on in one spot, you can tilt the paper around until the water and the pigment goes in the place that you want. Again, this takes a little bit of practice, but it is so much fun. And um, I really love doing this when there's a lot of color and I want to mix them together, but um, but I don't want to like drop my brush in there and kind of uh, mess too much with what's already happening. Tilting the paper is really fun. So at this point now, I am just going to be adding a lot of uh, just dots and blobs, um, nothing really, um, really complicated. Just sort of wherever I feel my brush wants to go, I'm, I'm just intuitively um, finding that spot. The rest of this demo is really just me um, continuing to use the techniques that I have talked about in this video. So I just wanted to take a moment to share with you this page is going to be available tomorrow via the Coloring Heaven Discovery Club. And the Discovery Club is sending out the email, but you have to sign up by midnight um, GMT. So that I believe is um, coming up very soon, that deadline. So if you want to grab this page and follow along with me, I am going to be doing a live stream tomorrow with the skin. Um, so I'm going to be coloring the skin live on camera um, and chatting with you guys. And um, yeah, if you want to color along with me, you want to go ahead and grab that, uh, that Coloring Heaven link in the description below and go ahead and sign up for the Discovery Club. There's going to be a new artist every week. Um, so my week will be uh, this Friday. And... Yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what you guys do, and I thought, um, you know, sitting down and coloring this with you would be a really fun um, way to spend my Friday. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, I'm starting at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which I believe is noon GMT, and uh, so you can feel free to pop on in the chat and say hello. Uh, we would love to see you there. <laughs> so you can just see it's mostly dots and blobs. I'm really, really just enjoying um, having fun with my watercolors. And um, there's no real um, rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I, I love dots and blobs for organic forms. Um, it really does end up looking like leaves once you add enough of it. Um, the trick here is to add enough detail so um, you can really see contrast and light and dark, but not so much that it becomes really, really uh, distracting. So it's a fine balance, but you can see here, I just work my, I take my time and I just work slowly 
and uh, just kind of uh, swirl my brush around, do a lot of dots, and just enjoy the process. Um, I find watercolor to be one of the most relaxing forms of um, coloring medium just because it is so easy on my hands. Uh, there's no pressure needed like you need with pencils. And also, um, it's just so much fun to kind of let go and see what the watercolor does uh, since you don't have full control. You can see I just lifted a big puddle just now. Um, I find that uh, lightening up that paper is fairly easy once the puddle starts to dry, but it's not completely dry yet. So I'm going to also lift up this big puddle over here, kind of move things around. Um, if there's a lot of water still, then I take a thirsty brush and I just suck up all that water um, with my uh, brush. This is a really great way to fix any mistakes before they're dry. Oh, I love painting so much. I hope you guys like this too. Um, I really do love doing tutorials like this. So if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the comments section below. Uh, I, I can do more like this if you like, or um, if you have another subject you'd like to see. So here's the finished product once it dried. I really had so much fun painting this, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial too. If you did, I'd love to see any feedback in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. And thank you so much for watching. I really do this for you guys. I love helping you out. And if you uh, want to grab anything that you saw me use, all the links are in the description below. And of course, the obligatory Abby clip at the end. She was so cute this week and I thought I'd share. Thanks for watching. Bye.